You know, from first light on, uh, uh, we're just anticipating or hoping for a steam cloud or something to take a picture of. At the 1,100-foot mark on Mount Adams, just 30 miles from Mount St. Helens, the climbers got their pictures. My first awareness of it was uh, when uh, my son David uh, was standing beside me and he tugged on my uh, sleeve and said, Hey, Dad, look, something's happening. Turned around and looked, and of course it was. And as soon as he alerted us, why everybody <laughs> was diving for their cameras and, uh, and hoping that we'd get a picture before it quit, quit erupting. I still think back to uh, watching that cloud go up and for all the world it looked like a gigantic atomic bomb. What point did it cease to be a curiosity or a gee whiz look at that to a realization of what it had done? I mean, Certainly within, uh, within the first minute or two of yeah, watching it, uh, we were aware of the fact that we were at that point seeing a major eruption. Uh, one of the things that we saw fairly fairly soon after that was a white cloud which came up through the gray cloud and began circling on the uh, northeast side of the mountain. We didn't realize it immediately, but that turned out to be the vaporization of Spirit Lake. Soon there was a mysterious buzzing noise in the air. And we were talking about where the, where the sound was coming from, and David said, uh, turned around and said, well, Dad, that's coming from my teeth. Uh -huh. And Electricity generated by the approaching ash cloud buzzed off of anything metal, from David's braces to the group leader's ice axe. I was standing beside him at the moment uh, that uh, we looked up in the sky and saw a fairly large branch uh, whirling through uh, several hundred feet up. He had his ice axe in his hand, and uh, just automatically he raised the ice axe and said, look at that. As he raised the ice axe, there was a bolt of uh, lightning that went out the end of the ice axe several hundred feet up into the uh, air, up into the sky. And uh, uh, he felt a very, uh, you know, pronounced jolt. For myself, I was, I, I got quite fearful. I had my daughter with me, and I thought, we're awfully exposed. And uh, I wasn't so concerned about the ash, but I started thinking, ash or not, there's lightning here, and we've got to get down to a lower level. Fiery debris rained down on the frightened climbers. We had no idea how long it was going to last. And then it became dark. We were gradually getting our group together and trying to get out, traveling entirely by compass. I remember we had to use flashlights even to see the compass in our hand. This is at 8.30 in the morning. The top concern for the climbers was the safety of their children, including the 14-year-old with the buzzing braces. I think he expressed what many of us were feeling deep down. He said, well, Dad, are we going to die at this point? And I, I said, no, I don't think so, Dave. I stopped short of giving him a, an absolute answer because none of us knew what was going to happen. It took the climbers eight long hours to get off the mountain and to phone their worried families. More difficult uh, emotionally for them, I think, than it was for those of us who knew what was happening and knew that we were, in fact, uh, still okay. The team wound up crediting one another for getting off the mountain alive. There wasn't anyone in our group that, that panicked or uh, fell apart under the pressure of it. I was just darn thankful that I'd gotten home.